Thank you all. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone from wherever you have joined. I know we have a, um, I know a huge list of participants from across the globe. Thank you all for taking your time to join us. You know, mentioned we are an end-to-end -end product company, end-to-end -end data managed uh, business process automation company. We are headquartered in Lansing, Michigan. We are about 24 years old, and globally we have about 500 plus professionals. And um, and we have very strong partnership with various OEMs like the Oracles, SAP, Salesforce, Microsoft, Snowflakes of the world. And most of our products are all certified by these OEMs. So if you're looking at you know leveraging our product for your uh, your use, you don't need to worry about it in terms of compatibility, security, and a lot more uh, aspects associated with selecting of our products. These products are all well tested by the OEMs before it is released into the market. Before I actually get into the topic of today's discussion, I'll give you a very high level overview for just one minute about what we offer. Our products are offered in two major platforms called the Smart Data Platform and the Smart Business Platform. Smart Data Platform has got three major products. It's an end-to-end -end data, data offering. It's called the Data Zap, Data Zen, and Data Zens, which talks about the movement, migration, archival reconciliation, integration of the data using data zap to maintaining the quality of the data you know in terms of be it your master data or your transactional data our objective is all about get clean and stay clean on your data leveraging a very powerful data quality management engine of our data zen in addition to that data zen takes care of anything and everything to do with us uh, security and compliances if you're looking at compliance to your data like your GDPR, CCPA, or ensuring that your PII data is masked, or leveraging the cataloging capabilities, analytics, visualization capabilities, you know, that is something offered by Data Zens. One other interesting platform which we have developed is a smart business or what I call as a smart digital platform. It's got two major products called the Smart Bots and the Smart App Builder. Smart, smart App Builder is a rapid application development framework which will help you to develop mobile or web applications on top of your standard ERP and CRM applications. And what we are going to see today is a smart bots, which is an RPA based business process automation tool and a QA automation tool, which can be leveraged for automation testing be during implementation or for regression testing. So there's a very high level overview in case, in addition to the smart bots for which you have all joined the webinar today, if you are interested in any other offering from our side, feel free to write to one of us or to anyone who, who invited you for today's webinar. We'll be happy to showcase the power of our products. Having said that, we all know any ERP program or a CRM program, or for that matter, any business transformation program, the success of it depends on three major aspects. Obviously, your business processes need to be ready to take all those transformation initiatives which we have done through the implementation of the CRM or ERP applications. In addition to that, needless to say, your system should be ready. It should be free from bugs, free from any issues associated with the using of the systems. And the user should be ready to use the systems in terms of training, in terms of awareness, in terms of ability to change to the changes that are associated with these transformation programs. We all know that the testing is such an important component in ERP, ERP or in CRM program. We are all completely aware of the software development life cycle. I'm not really getting into what it really means. We all know software development cycle is all about the sequence of different activities performed during the software development life cycle. But what I'm really keen to talk in today's session is all about the software test life cycle which is a sequence of different activities that is performed during the software testing process. And having come from implementation of several ERP and CRM programs, oftentimes testing is a neglected activity. It's not deliberate. It is just because, you know, many of the initial processes that are associated with the software development lifecycle takes more time than the plan time. So if you have your project plan, project plan for 12 months, and if you had already articulated the testing cycle for about six weeks, what invariably happens is 
we probably get very little time to do the testing. But as you see in the slide, the software development test life cycle involves so many activities. It involves right from analysis to testing and retesting of all the functions that has been you know, viewed not only by the IT team, but also by the, uh, by the business team. So when we actually, so what I would like to really look at it is, while process readiness, system readiness, and user readiness, is fundamental it's a key aspect or the key pillar for the success of any program i would also like to add that quality assurance is more like the foundation that helps the success of the program when we actually asked many of our customers and what were the top challenges in their cloud in any of their erp or crm programs obviously regression and automation testing was one of the top three concerns. Obviously, I did mention about the time. Usually the time that is available for testing is usually shrunk because of the time and project overrun. And in addition to that, when we are dealing with any ERP or CRM programs, the good thing about the pro about all these products is that we get regular updates from the OEMs so or the original equipment manufacturer or the companies which have created these ERP and CRM products which is a very good thing because you're staying up to date on what is happening in the industry. You're getting your systems updated from the statutory point of view and the regulatory point of view. But the real problem is that regular releases is also causing a lot of concerns in terms of how to test, what to test, how much to test, when to test, and so on and so forth. Then the other question which most of our customers mentioned is test coverage. Hey, Satish, I really don't know how much I need to test. I'm just given a window of two weeks time to do the testing. I just have 15 days to complete my testing. I don't know how much to test. And I'm not clear whether whatever I'm testing is sufficient for me to release to the production so that I avoid any severity one issues post production. In addition to that, we all know any testing activity involves a lot of time, not only from the IT team, but also from the business team. And with changing technology, ever-changing technology, the skills requirement for testing is also changing every now and then. It requires a lot of a mix of technical and functional knowledge for people who are trying to do the testing, which obviously increases the cost of quality. And we are all, we all know we are all in an unprecedented time where testing obviously need to happen. For that matter, even our IT investment should probably reduce because everybody wants to bring down the cost. And the cost of quality was something you know, which our customers mentioned as one of the key aspects for testing. And we all know why we need to do automation testing. Manual testing obviously takes a lot of time and effort. And it always, it's always good to have an early detection of bugs. In fact, I call it as a shift left approach to testing, wherein it will be good if I can get hold of my the bugs and the defects in my system as early as possible, rather than waiting for that to be reported by the business users. And in addition to that, there are a lot of requirements in industries like, so there are a lot of regulated industries like the pharmaceutical industry or banking industry, where we also need to keep a trail of testing. We also need to keep a documentation of testing so in many places we have seen if it is a manual effort maintaining those documentation also takes a significant amount of time of both the it and the business teams because all these testing all these activities are subjected to audits either on the financial side or on the regulatory side in addition to that one another aspect or good thing about automation testing is that i need to reuse as many components as possible for any number of testing. In addition to that, I should actually bring down the cost of quality while maintaining a very higher level of quality and my testing should obviously be in ease. So what we are really going to see in today's presentation, in today's webinar, you're going to see a demo of how Chains' smart bots has helped clients to configure and test their business processes, leveraging robotic process automation-based technology. You will actually see the UI API driven unattended testing that it's been leveraged by the bots, which is helping you to assure the quality of your ERP and CRM programs. 
So today you will understand how to assure the quality of your ERP programs in an automated way. You will know how robotic process automation can help reducing your test cycles. As I showed you, the software test lifecycle, though it includes several set of activities, is often ignored or we are not able to complete a complete level of do a complete level of testing because the time that is available is re reduced. We'll also learn how some of the examples of how many of our clients have adopted smart bots and have achieved higher levels of quality. In addition to that, my colleague Purushot, who is an architect of the smart bots program, he will also show you how a template based approach helps you in optimizing the regression test cycles. With that said, we all know what regression testing and process automation is all about, right? And as part of our smart bots, we have various bots, not just for your testing, not just for your quality assurance, but we also have bots which will help you to automate your business processes, your configurations, your setups, and whatnot. You can literally leverage our smart bots for automating not just the testing process, activities but also your entire business processes in addition to that how is that being done the way it is done is the smart bots accelerates the testing activities with a shift left approach of an early automation of your business processes what really happens is the user action is captured and then the performs the automation by repeating those tasks on the graphical user inter interfaces that's where your record your data flow the process flow and then the playback actually happens when do you really can use the smart bots you can literally use it during the release in any any release be it during implementation during your digital transformation initiative or as part of your regression testing why are we using it to improve my utilization of my resources reduce my time and effort and then more important thing especially quality today is not just one activity for sign off of the products today there are a lot of implications around compliances regulatory and statutory requirements all these can actually be accelerated by leveraging the smart bots which you are going to see in the next few minutes the beauty of our product is that we have created several thousands of ready to use templates for the various commonly used business processes be it, be it a, your Oracle or SAP or Microsoft Dynamics type of ERP applications or for your CRM applications like that of Salesforce or Siebel and many others. Having said that, I would like to just talk about what it is all about. The smart bots helps in QA automation, data loading, automating your functional and non-functional flows in your ERP and CRM modules. That's where, as I mentioned, there are ready to use templates and that will be leveraged because the templates actually provide standardization for testing these ERP and CRM applications. It has something like a recording feature. The recording feature in smart bots facilitates the end user to record the business process in the most simplest way. It is specially designed to record the different kinds of applications, be it your web application, your desktop or mobile type of applications. And once the recorded flow is record it, it's captured it actually in fact you will see that in act captures each and every action including every field or element with respective locators and what happens is you know using the recorded flows which has all the field level details with action that can be arch architecture which can be orchestrated to automate your one process in fact it is just a one-time effort like any creating any of the automation scripts and once you actually automate and create the create them it helps you to you know reuse it as an as and when you know you wanted to use it okay as i told you if we have multiple layers of the smart bots it's uh, it's we have the test bots we have the robotic process automation your business process automation and so on and so forth having said that i just wanted to bring in some important features which we have I did mention about the record and development feature, which is available in smart bots. And um, I forgot to mention, even when I was talking about all our platforms, these are all built on the principle of low programming, low coding or no programming. So obviously there are wonderful drag and drop approach for orchestration of the flow, wherein you can 
it provides much customized way um, you know for end users for that using our drag and drop approach it actually has offers a lot of flexibility and simple approach on the user interface and uh, in fact i call our smart bots as something which can execute uh, the testing activities in something like a headless mode wherein you will actually see how in a push is showing i uh, will be executing those test cases it has a headless feature mode where the testing and the data loading will be done without launching the browser from the front end environment in fact the headless mode provides automated control of any environment so that it can even run in a virtual mode the other cool feature which we have is that it can be scheduled you can just schedule all the test processes in the evening when you go go when you leave your office you can schedule all these activities and the process the testing process will be carried out on the schedule during the scheduled time in that process you can actually uh, without manual inter intervention the testing can happen in your absence in the scheduled time and probably in the morning you know when you come back you get all those test results you will see that in action some wonderful reports with the screenshots you know given to you in addition to that you know it's completely tightly integrated with all your erp and crm applications so you can provide all those access privileges for the bots you know you can uh, it, it can be integrated with your single sign-on systems it can be you can provide the access based on the privilege features that you have set it up you know for your read write or share modes for the bots uh, for the multiple end users and it can also be it can also be you know distribute you can also distribute these smart bots execution to multiple end users in a distributed environment and more important things is you know we have actually taken a lot of learnings from different test management tools and being a data company you know we also have put in a lot of efforts in terms of you know creating some wonderful dashboards and uh, analytics and the reports around how the testing is happening and one other cool feature which you will see in the in action in the next few minutes is the way the reports are provided smart bots provide the report with detailed information for the execution flows for uh, you know it can it can be provided both as an email or as a documentation and every action with respect to values is actually captured in the reports screenshots are included so that you you will get to know where exactly the process is failing or where exactly you know some changes need to be made and that's also easy for your development team when you report this as an issue by seeing the screenshots of what has been executed the development team can actually take the necessary action in ease and it also has a vulnerability scan feature which will help you to integrate your penetration testing for finding any vulnerabilities be it in your you know web applications and things like that and about above all you know it can also it can be done in a parallel processing mode wherein multiple processes to reduce the amount of time that has actually been used to run a bot it can actually execute a bot in your local system as well as you know doing it in your server or in the uh, remote desktops with that said i just spoke about some wonderful features which we have as part of our smart bot systems with that, you know, I will probably hand it over to my colleague Purushottaman to show you all a live demo on how the product works, and we will be happy to uh, answer any questions that will come further to the demo. Over to you, Purushottam. Thanks, Anisha. Hello, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, as uh, Sadish explained, uh, SmartBot is like uh, a cardigan replay for uh, automation. For, uh, Start mission. You can use the smart bots where you can go and record the sample flow, and you can convert that as a bot. It can be replayed for the name. So that is the way the smart bot will work. I'm going to show you like what are all the components we have in smart bots. So these are all the top layers like we have the setup option where we will define the connection details, and we have the implementation layer where we will define the bots and what are all the fields we are going to handle and what are the actions we are going to perform. And in the execution layer, we have the different options. So we have more number of tests first to be executed. So definitely we will be having a uh, lot of situations like we have to execute more number of flows in a sequence uh, and we need not to do that manually. 
and sometimes it has to be scheduled. So for all those scenarios, we in the execution layers, we have the schedule options, and we have the migration flow where you can combine more than one objects into that. And this is the playback, which is called bot, where we are going to define all sequence of actions for your test flow. And we have the process flow where we can also like construct multiple bots into that. We have the execution that you can distribute the bot execution for multiple systems. Like when you execute new bot, it will execute in a target system. In case when you have hundreds of use cases to be executed every day, it cannot be executed in only one system. Definitely we have to execute all the process like we have to distribute all the process to different system where we have to execute in a parallel mode also for that we are having the grid options and we have the data flows and we have the data extract in case if you want to extract any data from the different sources like our google drive or uh, 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 databases for that we are having the data extract option and I'm going to show you one playback for uh, Oracle Cloud. So uh, here we have uh, multiple playbacks which is created for different needs. So in the playback, we'll be having like uh, what are the actions we are going to perform on this element. So like we'll be having different kind of actions here. So I'm going for on Oracle Cloud payment transaction playback. So here you can see like uh, how it is structured. We have a different type of activities like we have the assignment activity. This activity will be useful for assigning the values that can be used during the flow. Like this, we have the verification and assertion activity, which can be used for validation purpose. And we have the iteration, which can be used for executing these st same steps multiple times. And we have the conditions where you can define the flows in a conditional way. Like this, we have uh, different kind of options to construct bots. So this is the structure of uh, human construction bot. So here you can see, first we have the home element where we are going to do the click action. And then we have the payable element that we are going to perform the click action. That is for each and every element having the actions. And you can see the iteration activity because this action may get executed multiple times based on the number of elements we are going to get executed. So for that we have used our iteration activity and here we have the elements which are all we are going to handle for this automation so we have the task element performance element business unit element for task element we are going to take action for payments we are going to take for business unit it is like uh, the field where we will get the values so we have to take the value for that we have the open table so like this we have different kind of actions into the bar so based on the need we can concept bots uh, using our uh, different kind of activities so this is and we have another component called layout where we have the all the elements all the uh, uh, screen details will be available in the layout so this is the uh, structure of our layout so here you can see the elements in the first layout and you can see the elements in the layouts so this is the place we will have all elements details so now we have seen how what is structured and uh, elements and layers are structured. Then we are going to see our migration flow where we can have more number of scripts can be aligned, be executed in a parallel or uh, sequential manner. In migration, we are going to show you like uh, uh, in Oracle Cloud, we are going to show you uh, elements and invoice creation process. Uh, before I get into this, uh, execution i'll show you the presentation and from there we can start so these are all the two use cases we are going to see now one is oracle cloud testing and in cloud testing we are going to see how ap invoice can be registered automatically through smart bot and how payments in the oracle cloud can be uh, uh, automatically registered by smart bots so in the sap side we are going to show you sales order creation part so uh, for automation testing so these are all the scenarios we are going to see as part of this webinar today this is the approach how we have constructed the part so here you can see like we are from the start then it will go for the uh, data validation side so that we have the extraction so when we have any test script to be executed definitely we have to provide the test data 
for providing the test data either we can manually uh, provide the data through the excel sheet it can be available in any other uh, uh, sources like uh, ftp side or google sheet or database if you want to extract we can use our data extraction from our extraction the data will be extracted and it will go for the data validation if it is for any uh, validation is required like uh, uh, either uh, we need to pass this data for the execution or not for validating those details we can use our data validation once the data is validated then it will go for the bot side and from there the bot will execute the script so while executing the scripts we will capture all the actions and values what we are pausing we will capture all these details into the document so that will be what uh we have a document will be generated at the end of execution so this is the flow uh we will construct what for any scenario and uh this is the flow of like uh, how we are going to execute the ap invoice and payments once we start the migration flow of oracle cloud testing for ap invoice and payments it will start the ap invoice creation process once uh fill all the details for a invoice then it will do the invoice validation once the invoice is validated then it will go for uh, post to ledger process once the invoice is post to ledger then it will go for the uh, payment creation so this is the flow we are going to see uh, as part of oracle cloud testing today and the sap is uh, in this flow like these are all the steps we are going to follow in the header side we are going to enter business unit supplier supplier side legal entity and in the line level we are going to enter type description amount and we are going to verify the distribution also and then we are going to save and validate then we will do the post to ledger it will happen in the inverse side and in the payment side it is going to enter the other information like business unit supplier site details and other details then it is going to test the invoice then it is going to get the payment this is the flow we are going to uh, run in oracle cloud and in the sap side we are going to see only sales order creation and in the sales order creation it is going to enter sales organization detail and distribution channel divisions and then it is going for the header information like sold to what issue to what if you are numbers and then it will enter the line details then it will create the sales order this is the process we are going to see in the oracle uh, uh, sap side so now we know so what we are going to run i'll i'll show you the live demo for oracle cloud now i'm going to open our uh, migration flow this is our uh, migration flow this is uh, cloud bots ap invoice with payment here you can see we have the two objects one is invoice creation and another one is payment i'll show you how this invoice creation is structured Here you can see we have the two uh, FTP uh, details here because these two are going to extract the data from the FTP location. The testing and these uh, data will be provided for the smart bots, which will be automation testing on the screen. So this is the way we can construct the flow. Either it can be FTP location or any different sources we can use. So next, I am going to execute this flow. The same way the payment has been uh, constructed. So we, we can see the structure of the payment also. You can see we have uh, uh, extract one is for the line detail for payment and another one is for the header detail for payment. And uh, once we extract data from the Excel sheet uh, from the FTP source, we are providing those data to our uh, bots. So from here we are doing the automation testing. So this is the structure of our flow. Now we can execute the flow. I have executed the flow now. You can see the first process has been started. So it will uh, extract uh, all the test data. And if any validation is there, then it will do all the validation. It is extracting the uh, invoice details and it is going to start the bot. So we have used uh, uh, the invoice details and uh, uh, out, out of these three, one invoice will uh, have the failure situation. So I'll show you how it get uh, failed. So now the browser has been launched. So bot has launched the browser and it is automatically logging into the uh, system. So we are not doing anything now. So the bot is doing all the actions. So now it will reach the home page. From there, it will navigate to the uh, invoice creation screen. It will go to the tables. 
and from there it will go for the create invoice from here it will uh, create invoice then it will provide all uh, header level details like business unit supplier supplier site legal entity uh, number amount details so it will provide all these header level details once it is done then it will go for the other tabs accounting and there it will provide the liability distribution details so after providing all these details it will go for the line level and it's providing the line level details like uh, type amount and distribution combinations so when we have a similar uh, kind of uh, uh, invoice we will have this uh, warning so we have to continue this so bot is doing the continue process also if it is done it will verify the uh, distribution side so it is uh, showing the distributions after this it is uh, going to save and now it is going to save the invoice and then it will validate now it is validated then it is going to the uh, post to jail option so now the invoice is created and uh, till uh, post to gl then it is going to see one close now the now we got the confirmation also and after creation of invoice it is going to do the spot check either the uh, invoice is there in the system or not so it is doing the spot check of to manage invoice system is, uh, invoice is created on the system now so all these actions will be captured in the document so whatever we are uh, performing on the screen like what is performing on the screen will be captured in the background document so i will show you after completion of all the executions so now it's creating a second advice so here the combination of uh, uh, liability distribution is not correct so it's showing the application throws the exception so the bot flow cannot be continued for this uh, particular invoice so it got stopped there and it's continuing the next invoice that is the third one so it is going for uh, invoice creation screen now and it's filling all uh, invoice data details like uh, business unit supplier and number and payment terms so it will fill all the level details and then it will go for the accounting details once it is done it will go for the line level uh, as we did for other invoices like what is the type of line and what is the amount what is the distribution combination then we will check the uh, distribution details also so it is going to uh, verify the uh, distribution details so here it's validating the distribution details once it is done it is going to save and close and now it is going to save the invoice so it's save and it's validating the invoice it's validated and now it's uh, posting the invoice to uh, GL. So now this particular process has completed. Next, it is going to verify that particular invoice is created on the system or not. So that is going on now. Yes, it's checked. So now it has created uh, three invoices. So uh, the first automation, you can see the second invoice got error. So uh, that's why it's showing completed with error and the payment process got triggered. Let us go to the execution side. Yeah, payment has triggered now. So it is going to create the payments uh, now. So it's navigating through the screens. Here it is going to uh, fill uh, payment uh, details and it is going to select the invoice uh, for uh, which we are going to create the payment. So it's going to fill the supplier, supplier side. So all these details. So as I mentioned earlier, all the actions whatever bot is performing now will be captured on the document in the background so uh, after completion of the flow we can go and check how it is uh, captured and that that particular document will be very useful like after completion of uh, testing also it can be used for any auditing purpose or even for anything like uh, if you want to uh, provide like a user training document can be very useful because that particular document will have all the steps like uh, how we have to navigate and what is the value we have to give for the field and what is the action we have to uh, provide for uh, we have to perform on the field so all these details will be captured there so now we can see uh, it's adding the inputs for the payment yeah just wanted to add to what Purushut is mentioning if you all see he's actually not doing anything on the screen at all okay everything is performed by the bot and the chrome is in fact being as you see on the screen 
the chrome has been controlled by an automated test software so he's literally not doing he's just talking he's probably you know he's just taken his hand out of his laptop and he's just talking so whatever activities these are all happening in parallel and in fact you know if you have one screen and you can actually in parallel you can continue to do your day job while the testing is happening in parallel yeah go ahead sure. sorry for interrupting yeah yeah so uh it's creating the uh second payment now so it's uh filling the payment method payment process and it is going to uh search for the uh, other details here then it is going to add the invoice for the payment yeah it's picked the invoice uh, which is created from our previous process it's filling the uh discount and amount details and the payment is also created now then it is going to uh, check the payment process uh, either it has been uh, created on the system as uh, we mentioned uh, bot is doing all the actions so we are not uh, performing anything on the screens so we uh, bot has completed the uh, testing of uh, create invoice and payments now so it has it is automatically logging out and closing the process so now the process has been completed now we will come here so it is going to uh, in the uh, payment process now so let us refresh here yeah you can see it is succeeded so we have executed two scripts one is invoice creation and another one is payment the invoice creation is failed with error because it got errored in the uh, second invoice due to the uh, invalid uh, distribution account and the payment had a uh, two uh, payments so it, it got succeeded so it got created successfully now i'm going to uh, download the execution report for this execution this report will have all the details what has happened uh, during this execution so it's going to download now in this document you can see like when it is uh, executed and uh, what is the uh, flow we have executed and who has executed and then it will show you like how many uh, this is like a table of contents like what it is going to have and uh, you can see uh, this is the connection details like uh, this is the flow we have executed and this is the end point our conclusion is the end point uh, we have used output from the uh, this particular screen and this is the target instance where we have executed the uh, testing and uh, so it will give you the time also what is the uh, short time and time all those details and here it will give you the summary of like uh, bot execution we have executed two bots one is completed with error and another one is successfully completed it's showing the status here and uh, here you can see in the first bot we have executed with uh, two test data two invoices uh, sorry three invoices uh, two is passed and one is uh, failed and uh, this is the first iteration of our uh, invoice creation you can see like what are all the steps we have so we have to click the home button it got succeeded we have to click the payable it got succeeded like this it has completed the entire process so the total action is uh, uh, succeeded for the iteration one so of these details if you want to have the screenshot for each and every step our, our document will have it but this print, uh, that option is configurable either it can be enabled for each and every step or it can be uh, added wherever it is required so here we have added for each and every action so that's what we uh, we have mentioned like it can be user used as a uh, user uh, training document so this is for iteration one and uh, i'm just scrolling down to reach uh, iteration two so in the iteration two we had the uh, error uh, so uh, we are going to check that if this is the iteration two you can see like it's not completed all the steps so it got failed in the uh, 13 steps so it, it uh, it's entering the values on the liability distribution and it's not able to move forward so it's failing on the 13 step so this is the status of iteration three. once it got failed in between the executions so it will capture the error of that particular screen so you can easily go and see what is the error why it got failed out so you can see this uh, error screenshot will be added into the document so uh, like this they can easily 
do and check where it got failed and based on that we can go for the active action of that particular uh, scenario so this is the iteration key for the invoice creation so it got uh, succeeded so i'm going for the payment process in payment we have created uh, two payments so all this flow will be uh, succeeded so i'm going to show that in the document so you can feel like uh, as every stage documents and it has the state of each and every action so it will be very useful for auditing as well as uh, uh, training purpose also this is the iteration key of invoice and uh, this is the iteration one for uh, payment process so you can see all the action has been uh, performed so the status is uh, success and uh, for uh, next payment you can see all action has been uh, completed successfully so this is a way it will provide the document which will be very useful for uh, auditing as well as uh, training. so now we have we have seen how we can uh, 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 do the test automation for oracle cloud and next we are going to see how we can automate for oracle uh, uh, sap flow so that is for uh, Sales order creation. I'm going to show you how that uh, SAP sales order creation bot is created. We have the data flow for that. This is the data flow. So here you can see what is the structure. The same way it is extracted from the SAP, and it is passing all those details over uh, bot loader. So uh, I'm going to uh, show you the recorder uh, of this particular execution for you. Here we are logging into the system, and uh, then we are going to open that uh, data flow here i am searching the data flow which i am going to execute and uh, here i am going to uh, show you the structure which i have uh, just now showed you like the, how it is structured and uh, then we can start the execution so you can click the execute button so the bot has triggered now it is doing all uh, uh, test data extraction and it got succeeded then the uh, bot execution has been started. So for uh, any uh, desktop automation like the SAP or Oracle EBS forms, so the, the automation will take control on the entire desktop. So uh, it is uh, navigating through the SAP screens and it is uh, logging into the system now, the SAP system. Then it is going to create the sales order. So it is going to enter the key code and it is going to fill the uh, sales order header level details. All these are happening automatically without Purifiot's intervention. Now the bot is performing the actions. So it's filling the uh, sold to party, ship to party, PO number, all these details. Like this, uh, uh, by using these smart bots, we can automate any kind of application. Like it can be a desktop application like SAP, GUI, or uh, Oracle Forms, or any custom application which is uh, built with uh, 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 Windows based technologies, we can use these smart bots for automation, as well as any HTML based application like for uh, Oracle Cloud in, in SAP Fiori, or even in uh, Oracle EBS for HTML forms, uh, we can use this smart bot. And it will work for any kind of custom applications also, maybe uh, it's uh, built with a uh, uh, Desktop based technology or web based technology. So, smart word will support for uh, automation testing for uh, different kind of applications. So, now it's filling the details of uh, sales order here. So, it's filling the uh, sold to party and uh, ship to party. So, all those details. So, uh, as we uh, uh, saw in the Oracle Cloud automation, uh, for desktop automation also it will uh, capture all the actions in the uh, uh, background like uh, whatever we are performing on the screens and values and the screenshot will be captured for each and every actions 
So it will generate the same kind of report for uh, desktop automations also. Yeah. So now the uh, sales order is created and it is automatically logging out. So the bot is doing all the process. So till login uh, uh, from the login to uh, logout. So you can see it's completed now. So this is the way uh, the smart bot will work for uh, different kind of uh, testing, like uh, for SAP or Oracle Cloud or any kind of custom application. We can use the uh, smart bots. So uh, we have seen uh, two flows now. So I, I think uh, uh, we can uh, go for any QVs if you have. Sure, Purushod. Thank you so much, Satish and Pulsho. That was an insightful session. Yes, we will go over to the questions. A uh, quick reminder, if you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the question box in the GoToWebinar control panel. All right, I have questions coming up. Here we go. Can smart bots help prepare any training documents? Yeah, um, I think uh, you just saw um, you know, you also, you just heard David Purshot mentioning about it when you are showing the test reports. In fact, the test reports come in a PD, in a, either in a documentation form, doc format or in a PDF format. You can leverage that because it's literally the action of the business processes. Each and every single step is captured. Each and every single screenshot or navigations are captured. So this can be repurposed as a training document. Many of our customers and partners were using the products. They literally, you know, make the bot to run the processes. And then for a, obviously, you know, if it is a failed process, you may have to run a, um, run a process that actually passes and only then you can use it for training documentation. Yes, it in fact reduces a significant amount of time for training, training documentation creation. It in fact serves purpose like the UPK and other type of products which are already available in the market. Yes, to answer the question, yes, and in a very significant way, in a much detailed fashion when somebody, in, when compared to somebody manually creating those documents. Thank Thanks for the question. Thank you, Satish. Do we have the scheduling option? Yes. yes. Yeah, do you want to, you, you can cover that. Yeah. So we can schedule the bots like uh, because uh, as I mentioned, like, uh, when you have more number of uh, test bots to be executed every day, definitely we cannot go and trigger it manually. So obviously, it has to be scheduled. So that will be the time saving process. So definitely, we have the scheduling options in smart bots where user can go and say on what time this particular process can be triggered. So like, uh, uh, say for example, uh, during the night time, they can schedule all the test scripts to be executed. When they come in the morning, they can go and check like how many bots have failed. So they can check the document also, like where it got failed and what is the error of that particular screenshot. So based on that, if they need to report to any development tool, they can run the path with the screenshot and so, which is provided by uh, small bots. Uh, execution performance so uh, yes we have the uh, scheduling options yeah. thank you Pulso. Uh, another question here what will happen if any error is occurred during the execution for a uh, error situation uh, we have showcased in this demo also like uh, when it got failed so what we'll do is it will capture the status of that particular uh, uh, test case like error and it will capture the screenshot on that particular place where it got failed so it will be captured on the document side as well as the status will be updated in the system side also where we can easily identify this particular script got failed for some reason so uh, this is the way and one more thing is when you have more test data to be executed for a same flow what it will do is in case if one uh, test data got failed it will just skip that uh, not skip, it will mark it as a error and it will process the other uh, test data. So this is the way it will work when we have the error cases. Okay, I have another question on self-healing for bot failure. Is it the same as what we answered now? Uh, no, the self-healing is different. Like uh, when we develop the bot, like for Oracle Cloud, if you are developing uh, 
today it might be like uh, 22.d uh, version so in case uh, if oracle is releasing the next update uh, in uh, another one month so we will be having the question like either the same bot will work for the updated oracle cloud because when we have the update on the target environment definitely we may have some changes on the target fields or some fields might have been modified removed so we'll be having the question like how it will be uh, handled from the smart bar side so we have the simple option in the smart bars which will automatically identify uh, what all the fields got modified and it will identify what is the updated information for that particular element and it will uh, apply the changes automatically you need not to manually go and see uh, which field got modified and you need not to manually update the particular field so we have the object analysis utility which will automatically identify the modification and it will update the uh, 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 revised uh, locators for those elements so which will automatically uh, resolve the problems of uh, 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 issues which are which are all happened due to the upgrade of the target environments. So SmartBot has this self-healing which can automatically heal the uh, these kind of uh, changes on the target systems. Okay, one last question. We will go with that. How will we update the bot if any changes in target application due to an upgrade or any release? So uh, it might be almost similar to the previous question like uh, when we have the upgrade uh, we have the object analysis like where you can go and run multiple bots to identify any changes is happened on uh, due to the upgrade so the object analysis will analyze and identify what are all the fields got modified and it will automatically update the changes you need not to manually go and update it will automatically update and it will give you the report like these are all the fields got updated due to the target version changes target application changes and then you can execute the bot once it is uh, 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 verified through the object analysis it is ready for the feature release we can directly go and execute for the feature releases so this is the way the smart bot which work for any uh, feature releases is done on the target environment side. Thank you, Purshat. Uh, we've almost come to the end. Satish, is there anything you want to cover before a wrap up? No, that's good. In fact, uh, whatever Purshat was explaining, he was just talking about the impact analysis. Whenever there are some quarterly releases or some regular releases from uh, the OEMs, it does those impact analysis and find out, you know, what components are impacted and accordingly, you know, we can do the modifications and do the testing. So I uh, really appreciate, uh, you know, each one of them who have joined today's call. So this is what we wanted to cover, Caroline. Thank you so much, Satish and Purushot. Great. And thank you, everyone, for, for your time. We appreciate you being here. Um, see you on our next webinar. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.